I'm, I'm, not, I'm editing Hello. that. Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a new episode of the TV Grins podcast. Um, we've got a new series starting up, our inaugural episode, and I'm joined with the lovely Alex. Hi. 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 Oh. And our... I'm missing um, everything. <laughs> yeah, talk over me whilst you do it as well. That's really cool. Yeah. Can do that. <laughs> um, our new series is going to be called Al's Bum Reviews. Yes. Artistic integrity intact. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Um, and it's basically going to be us going through some of our favourites, some of our some of the newest albums out at the moment, mm-hmm. old favourites, and things that have influenced us over the years. Would you? Is that what you'd say? Yeah, we've got quite a hefty hefty selection of albums to listen to and kind of tell everyone about so i mean i'm, I'm sure everyone's probably listened to these albums before but <laughs> Let's i'm sure they're just waiting for us to talk about them more talk than about anything them again. <laughs> yeah. um so what alex what gives you the right to be chatting about albums what's, um, what's the credentials well i current well I'm, I'm studying a music degree that's only part of it um i'm more interested in giving my opinion about music because I work in a pub that has really... Are you allowed to swear on this? Yes, of course. Really shit entertainment. <laughs> on, um, what sort I of should have asked that before we started. Really. <laughs> but um, but like, uh, like really shitty entertainment, which is basically like 80s music, like 80s power ballads. Do people play it whilst they're in the pub? They're, no, they're, as in there's performance. Like... Why? Singing. Right. You haven't told me about this. And I feel, I feel like I need to come down and at least witness the fitness before... Witness the fitness. <laughs> before it goes any further. How have I not been a part of this conversation? It's, uh, it's not very good. Like, today, for example, we had a guy singing and playing, like, guitar. But his guitar was so, like, screechy and, like, harsh sounding that it was just horrible to listen to whenever you walk to one part of the bar <laughs> that was like directly in front of the speakers and it was like right in your ears and it was just right horrible. In your but he was playing like salt and the swing and stuff like that so he had like the, the potential to, to he, he was good a good guitarist i wasn't sure if he was actually singing like he he looked like he was kind of doing a robbie williams kind of <laughs> mouthing the words but there's no respect no disrespect sorry not no respect to no, robbie respect. <laughs> no respect no respect no disrespect to the old <laughs> Robbie Williams, but I don't know. I can't believe I've never known this about the, the pub you that you not? work There's in. There's loads of like, I mean, you've never been in there, I guess. I have been once. in there, and they Why? played. There was a saxophone player. Exactly. So you know that <laughs> all the saxophone but people are really good, actually. Yeah, like they were. I just thought it was a bit of a one-off, but I didn't realise they did no, 80s they, power ballads on the regular basis. Yeah, the, the the saxophone people are probably like the pick of the bunch. If I'm being <laughs> honest, like they're uh, yeah, they're they're a lot better than the usual lot who are bouncing around there so mm, snazzy yeah that's that that's what gives me the right to talk about music because <laughs> so otherwise i'm standing there watching 60 year olds like tapping along out of time to mm. shit songs so so i'd rather give my opinion on good music <laughs> <laughs> so alex is doing a music degree and is so egotistical that he needs to get it out of his head <laughs> literally it doesn't it doesn't go much further than that to be honest nice Nice. There you go. What gives you the right, Joseph? Oh. What gives you the right? <laughs> well, I learnt. Well, I'm quite well endowed in the in the skill department on the guitar. I don't know if you know this okay. about me. Um, no, no, okay. I've, I've <laughs> <laughs> when was this? Twelve years ago. <laughs> That's irrelevant to time frame. Oh, was that, I, a good, that was a good guess, wasn't it? 12 yeah, years, well, that is well, actually twelve well, actually years ago. Actually, twelve years ago. Um, I learned. We can edit out the twelve years. <laughs> right, we're on? editing this bit out. This is a joke. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I learnt the uh, opening chords to the White Stripes and I and my first song. Go on. <laughs> Daniel Beddingfield got to get through this. I don't know that. So yeah, you are doing just saying. I'm quite talented yeah. and I know what I'm doing. So I feel like it's my God given right to yeah. then spout out my our, emotions. We've been to our fair amount of gigs. And yeah, this is the main thing. I like to make playlists and I like to go to gigs. So. And you've you've recently acquired a DJ set. So. I mean, I'm not bragging about it, not but yeah, I'm not gonna brag about it. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I feel like we're we're yeah we're possible. Everything's possible here. I think we're <laughs> we're a good we we've got good ears. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's what I put it down to. <laughs> Probably. Probably. So the album that we're going to be reviewing is the Oriel's Silver Dollar Moment, which was released back in February 2018. And I do believe, wow. Alex, it was your choice to do the wow. Oriel's. Yeah. 
Tell me about that. I can't remember why I chose them. It's more that I hadn't really... I think we were talking about doing this podcast in like June, maybe mm. May, and we just about got around to it. But I think I was trying to get myself to listen to that album because <laughs> I didn't really have the <laughs> motivation a, to do it. needed a reason to get it going. <laughs> yeah, and I think I've, I've, like, I've met the Orioles a couple of times, weirdly, Ooh, Franco. at festivals that I've been to. Mm. And one of my friends, Eve, interviewed them flying vinyl festival in like 2016 oh, okay that's pretty cool. and then when we went to why not that year we bumped into them well eve bumped into them and was we ended up going back to their tent and everything and chilling with them for a little while it's quite cool oh wicked but they at that time they weren't signed to heavenly so they were oh, still like wow. independent still just doing their thing and yeah trying to do what just they gigging wanted to. as much as you can yeah to try and catch catch an eye i suppose and then obviously they did because by the time we met them again at truck the like a year later mm. like truck festival they were signed to heavenly and they were doing pretty good things like they was they i think they just released like their new single or something like that so yeah this must this album must have been in production then when you were yeah. you and you met them back in last Seven, year yeah 2017 yeah, yeah it must have been like full pl- full production at yeah this point. I, I reckon so like they were yeah they were different people then i think like he- <laughs> i think I don't know. We didn't really chat to the the two girls in the band. We just chatted to Henry mostly because he was just more around the festival than yeah. the other two. But yeah, they're really nice people to be fair. But I'm sure they won't remember me. But <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> it's just, claim to fame anyway. I'm just right? gonna put it out there. Not all the albums we're gonna be reviewing is gonna be people that Alex has met in, fit in real life. But <laughs> I'm gonna put forward most of the people that I have met. <laughs> just so you can brag about it and yeah. tag them on Twitter. Is that what happens? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it, that's it. So you touched on it earlier, um, but they're signed to Heavenly Recordings. Yeah. And so people that are on that label are King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I thought you might get that um, one. Boy Azuga. Mm-hmm. The boys. I know tons of people on this out this yeah. record label. I it's forgot. Te- I forgot early. Temples were on this record label. They as well. are, but yeah, they are. They that's are crazy. I forgot about them. Maybe that's we'll it, have that's to do their, it, their uh-huh. album at some point. Yeah, we do. I like Temples. But they've got they've got lo- loads of like Welsh people on them. Welsh people, Welsh bands, and like artists on their label, which yeah, makes me think they might be Welsh based, but they're, I don't think they are. I think, I don't know. but they've got a lot of Aussies as well. So a lot of Aussies, well, and then like a lot yeah, of yeah. I think Welsh. they might cross over because I th- I know that the King is a label. They've got their own one in like Australia, and mm. then they've kind of crossed it over. So they've got representatives. Yeah, in England, oh, I get so, you. But yeah. Might have to do a little bit more digging on Heavenly Recordings. <laughs> yeah, they're like I think they're definitely my favourite record label in the yeah, UK I think anyway. I like their branding on like a nerdy sense of it. Yeah. I'm a bit of a, con- a brand nerd. I got nerd. one of their shirts. Yeah. One of their t-shirts. I just think it's really nicely like it feels quite nostalgic and homely, but like yeah. not unapproachable. It's not like a it's not a massive massive label, but at the same mm. time it feels quite DIY. Yeah, quite they're still they've attainable. Got I think they've got the because we went to see Boy Azuga once and they they've got their own like this place called the Social mm. in it's basically just off Oxford Street. In okay. Oh and, yeah, I think I've heard of it actually. And that's like a little venue basically that mm. is where the Heavenly headquarters is. Oh, I see. So they just put tons of like Heavenly people on there. I think oh, not just d- Heavenly people. That's the dream, isn't it? To have an office mm-hmm. and a venue in the same space. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Like, it's a really nice place. We'll put it on the to-do list, shall we? I think when I was there, I was like, I'd like to work here. <laughs> Whether it was just on a bar. I'm not just a bar person. Like, I'm just, not just a barman. That's what it's coming across as. Just a lovely little barmaid. I, I am interested in the music industry as well. <laughs> so, so shall I give you some facts about the Orioles? Go on. Hit me with so, some facts that I probably don't actually know. You know them already, probably, anyway. So they're hailing from Halifax. Alex, where is Halifax? Up north. Up north. It's well up north, isn't it? Yeah. I think. I don't mean to... I think it's one of the near Carlisle, isn't it? No, I'm probably making that up. <laughs> don't quote like... me on that. I might look it up. <laughs> I think it's Yorkshire. It probably is Yorkshire, to be fair. Can I look it Can up? Can you fact check me, please? Um, but I'll carry on anyway. So the Orioles are sisters Sidoni and Esme, who you didn't know before, but you know now. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, and their uh, best mate... Henry. Yeah, Henry. Oh, he's got a double barrel surname, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, I cut it out of my editing because I it was too long. <laughs> <laughs> it was too long. Um, they met at a house party just a few years ago, and could you imagine starting a band with all the random people that you met at house parties when you were sixteen? T- that sounds quite familiar, actually. I met Aaron. You did. You did meet Aaron at a house, house party. party. That's Aaron, um, your current frontman of your band. Yeah, the old blue mess. Yeah, the blue. 
mess. The blue mess. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit rude. And anyway, the Orioles bonded over their shared love of alternative US bands from the 90s, such as Sonic Youth, Pixies, and pioneering filmmakers, including Quentin Tarantino. Um, They're keen proponents of the DIY aesthetic, and they learned their instruments through uh, on the road through gigging, and the band have spent the past few years polishing their sound with a steadily string of singles previously released. And that was from their actually heavenly recordings fan page, not fan page. Oh, the old bio artist page. page. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, it's basically sorry, Halifax. This is <laughs> it's, um, Halifax news. <laughs> it's near Bradford. Oh, which Leeds. It's also then. near Leeds, which is also near Huddersfield. Hmm. If you need to know anywhere else near Halifax, <laughs> look it up on a map. <laughs> Thanks for that, Alex. <laughs> so, I reckon we used to give the old album a listen don't we yeah i mean we have it's not that we haven't listened to it yeah That'd we have silly we have done our prep but yeah we need to reprep refresh and then we're going to do like a little bit of a, a track analysis so we're going to leave you be for about 45 minutes and come back Album, full thing. A full thing. A full like shebang. I, but I feel like I need a little nap now. It's good. No. <laughs> One because it's quite late, and two I've opened a cider, and I think that was nah. just. What are you drinking tonight, Josie? On the subject. I'm accidentally drinking a strongbow, not by choice. Accidentally. Well, the only other option was budget beer. Oh, sorry. Oh my God! <laughs> please put your phones on silent. <laughs> this <laughs> is the protocol. Uh, trying to be professional here. Ugh. I'm trying trying <coughs> um but yeah accidentally drinking a cider um what are you drink what are you having alex i'm sticking it to my am- um amsterdam roots not that i'm gonna <laughs> but i've been to amsterdam <laughs> once and really enjoyed it so um so that's why i'm currently drinking amstel mm. and i did stay on the amstel river funnily enough bragger fame, to fame. <laughs> yeah fair enough so that's me that's 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 where i'm at so we've, right, so we've listened to the full album. Yeah. We're in a good place now, I think. Um, so Alex, straight off the bat, what's your favourite track? Um, I like The Sound of Liminal Spaces. Not in general. <laughs> but I like the song stop. named <laughs> The Sound of Liminal Spaces. I agree with you. I really like that track. I think yeah. it's really, like, it's quite soothing. I think because I mean. it comes after a song called Liminal Spaces. It's like a complete, I think, I find it's a bit of a contrast to what the actual, the first song was about. Mm. Or not about, but the vibe, the general thing that was going on. Yeah, I um, agree with you. My favourite was Sound of Liminal Space, Sound of Liminal Space, if I can get it out of my mouth. Um, or Blue Suitcase, which I really liked. Yeah. Blue so Suitcase sh- is quite a... Sorry, I keep talking over you. It's fine, I'm just kind of <laughs> used to it by now. You know. Should we go through track list? Yeah. So we opened up with Mango with the opening track. Yeah. Um, what I've come to realise with the way that I analyse things is quite emotional. And I like to what place... You cry about it. I cry all the time. Okay. And I tend to put my... When I listen to a track, I tend to like resonate with a memory that I've had. So That's interesting. I'm quite emotional in the way that I sort of link it yeah. together or I think of it in like a film sense of... I would place it in a part of a film where the person's doing something or... That's an interesting way of looking at things. Yeah. I've never really thought of that before. I'm not very, like, technical, whereas I feel like you're going to go into, like, yeah, they used this the... on, they layered this on something. I'm going to go into the dirty details. Dirty. nitty gritty. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okay, just... opening track. What are your initial thoughts? Um, I like it. I think it, going oh. from what the notes I've made... Um, it sounds a lot like bands like Peace and mm. stuff like that, but it still kind of gets away from the normal, like the idea that it's been done before. Like it's, it's kind of still feels a bit new, and yeah. Not like not like washed up kind of sounding, which is good. Um, I thought it sounded really fresh in that sense. I thought it was like a really mm. solid, good opening to what the band's all about. Because as yeah. you go through the rest of the album, it, you can it really lays tell. the foundations for what's to come, really. Exactly. It's like, all, it all kind of sounds... They've got. A, they've definitely got their own sound that they've probably been working on for a long time. Mm, definitely. And it 
kind of comes through in the at least the first four songs they're very much like similar sounding yeah definitely they've got a bit of a signature and i think like by the time you get to the like the third track it's very much like oh, okay this is what the band's about yeah. and then but, you get to like come to expect it in mm. all the rest of the songs but from a first a track a analysis in the middle yeah. section that might, definitely it's kind of needed in a way not in, in a bad way but it's more like it keeps them fresh which is good yeah definitely um, I kind of saw this like first track as proper side of summers and freckles. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're, yeah, I get that. It's okay. it just reminds me of like being. It feels quite a nostalgic song. Yeah, I was gonna say a lot of the, the like the first yeah, especially the first song. It kind of gives me like proper summer vibes. Like mm. Sitting in the park with your mates, having a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you sit in the park with? Yeah, you know. I... <laughs> Uh, is that you know? I just, I've got a couple of friends. I like to sit in the park with. I've got friends. I've got friends. I promise. It's not just me on my own. <laughs> no, it does sound like it. It does sound like it, pal. Nice. Um, <laughs> and I've just put cowbell and organs, which I really like. Yeah, I mean, I've written percussion is incredibly important to music, but it's also the most underrated part of the track. Yeah. Because it completely changes the feel of something. It definitely does, and I think that they use it in so many different ways when it comes like onto the later tracks as well. They really kind they of do. experiment with how they want yeah. percussion to sound. Um, I think they use bells a ton as well, really under, like underlying. Like they've just got a couple of bells that just get boom, 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 and xylophones, good yes. ones, bongos, tambourines, shakers. They've done it all. Like <laughs> they've, they've done really, it all. <laughs> it's not that they've exhausted it, but it feels like when I was listening to it the first time through, I was like. Crikey! Like they, they really have got. Through. Like they they really did buy a, like my first just percussion <laughs> kit. Like that has like ten different pieces of percussion in it, like maracas and everything. Percussion for that sounds like it. I was really dissing them, but I'm not. Like I, I rate it because I really do like percussion. Like, I think it's an interesting way to use like kind of normal percussion. Yeah. Without going like super techy and yeah, or cowbells as well. Exactly. So yeah, the first song has got tons of cowbells Such in like the first cowbell. 30 seconds. Um, also, you can definitely... You were, mention, were you mentioning it during us recording or before? I Talking know. about their, they've been influenced by a lot of like American bands. Mm, yeah. Um, that They mentioned dollars a lot, and in the first song, she kind of sounds American. Yeah. I don't know if that's like intentionally or because of the influences that they've got because mm, when we were listening through on the album before i sort of like made notes and like did the research into like who they were what they're influenced by the initial kind of thought was oh i wonder where these guys are from kind of think it's quite an yeah. la vibe if you know yeah what I yeah, mean. yeah. I, I thought that i think it has like a quite a british stamp in yeah. some respects i think the maybe the the instrument sounds like the guitars the, mm. that sounds quite modern indie british sound yeah there's definitely but like the a sound at the moment what that is i'd say the voice actually reminds me a lot of sunflower bean like you know that mm. kind of like really soft kind of dreamscape yeah kind dreamy of. kind of atmospheric vocally kind of thing that's mm. still got that like kind of i don't know different kind of vibe about it but you were mentioning i think pixies and yeah it's Weirdly, I wrote this in my notes. Weirdly, being a lot Weirdly. the word I'm using a lot. Um, <laughs> what a coincidence! It's how I imagined. You know the the backing singer of the Pixies, the the woman. I can't remember yeah, her name. Yeah, just goes. What? Yeah, like in in that song, "Where Is My Mind?" She's just yeah. like. Meh. I'm not going to re- replicate it too much, but um, she, that's the vocal on this song, like these songs, is how I imagine the Pixies backing singer to have a voice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Does that I make hear sense? That. Yeah, I really hear like, that. That's how I imagined her to sing if she was to sing. Which sounds really dumb because they probably have got a song where she sings in it and I'm just a fake fan. But it's kind of like that urethral softness. Yeah. With like the with the percussion and with like the yeah. synthy vibes that run on the You got a lot of weird like, things really going on nice. with like the guitar and everything, but the voice is so like soft and like calming that it makes it like brings it all back down to earth yeah because i say. think it has the potential it could be any indie band yeah but it's her voice that puts like i'm mm. not saying that she's star of show but it kind of makes it more relevant and more fresh and more yeah, like more different to real. your average yeah. like boy singing about 
being lovesick, not being not referencing peace. Maybe not I am a little bit. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> but just like your classic like indie boy band that's just washed up doing the same thing that every other indie boy yeah. band is doing, which is like Yeah, I'm glad they're not just singing about Anything. being in love all the time. It's more they're singing about pockets and trees. But do you think <laughs> that's because it's I'm ass- well, I'm assuming the girl's a songwriter. Mm. Do you think that's a, a b- bit of a different perspective? Maybe we don't hear that many female Maybe. songwriters, so it's kind of nice and a bit different to listen to what a different perspective is. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sort of tenuously really, linking really questioning this. questioning there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's a good mm. point to make, to be fair. I just think, like... It's a very relevant point. Yeah, I don't person. Well, I don't personally know that many female songwriters, but when I no. do hear them sing, or like I've got a few friends that are songwriters, when I hear them, I'm like, oh, I really resonate with you a little bit differently. Yeah, because they have a I, different point of view. Whereas a lot of like the boys, boys that I know that are songwriters or bands that I've listened to that are songwriters, I think they're mm. they are very different stories that they're telling. Yeah, but yeah it's almost they're a, not they'll tell good. stories about similar things that have happened, but they tell it in such a different way that. Mm makes you resonate more in different ways i suppose yeah does that make sense i'm probably just talking up my ass but you are but i like it fine cool (laughs) i'm glad we're related (laughs) um so all that on just track one that was just track one to be fair (laughs) um so second track is old stuff new glass yeah i i want to want to bring up a point it sounds like tame impala trying to cover an indie song (laughs) right okay because they use an an effect on the guitar Mm. called a phaser so it's me getting technical here all right someone needs to be technical in here because i'm just dreamy gush gush over here and, yes. yeah. well they use a, an effect called a phaser mm. which is basically used tons on like tame impala first and second record mm. um and it's not saying it's a bad thing because they really kind of nailed it to be honest um yeah so what does a fader do does it a phaser phaser sorry it's like it makes it <laughs> sound it. like Okay, so that's sort of like... If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I've just entered a time warp. <laughs> yeah, you have. Like, you just entered space. Like... <laughs> you know, um, so there's this... I don't know if you remember it, because you're quite... You're a bit younger than me. Oh. <laughs> quite a bit younger than me. <laughs> quite a bit younger than me. But there used to be a show called, like, Pippin. I know Pippin. Pippin. I'm not... I wasn't born in a, like... I wasn't born yesterday. That's you the practically point were. You're so young. Um, oh, but you know, in that they go up in the plane. I imagine yeah. that that's what that sounds like. Put a shit ton phaser or whatever it is. Fader, phaser, 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 yeah. phaser on that. I could shit. get an example actually, but breaking copyright law, I can't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no you're no. all right, pal. Um, I'll just show you it sometime. I'm sure. Yeah, you'll you'll know it when you hear it. Yeah, I get it. Now you've done the incredible, <laughs> the amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put that on a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought there was a bit of like the bit of guitar on there when it does like a really short like jing jing was quite clashy like it, it had like yeah. a bit of an eighties clash vibe yeah which I think they got is some kind of weird kind of references going on yeah I thought it kind of showed all of their like three sixty of references hundred mm. percent like you said like Tame Impala like there was obviously indie ones there was quite a lot of like eighties bassy synthy type yeah things going on there's in a there lot of, yeah there's a lot of like kind of Definitely a lot of 80s vibes. I get that from, especially that song that we were saying was our favourite, mm. The Sound of Liminal Spaces, where it's like kind of like funky kind of. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, like dancey kind of funky kind of thing. That's that's not just any other thing other than 80s, to be fair, is it? And then mm. I think there was a, I can't remember what song it is now, because I didn't write a note on it. Classic. It <laughs> might have been Snaps. Mm. Um, where there's, or Boricero Tree. Where there's like a really nice like synth line. Yeah. There's mm. like bassy's kind of synth line, but you don't get that in things that aren't 80s influence. Yeah. Because that was like a big thing back in that time. Some Someone developed a bit of technology and then everybody used it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then everyone like overused it until, yeah. Mm. And I, I think especially with like this track, even though I've, I've probably listened to the album maybe four times all the way through mm. from like months and months ago to like, just now and i found myself singing along like yeah and you knew it instantly yeah yeah and i think i found that for quite a lot of the the tracks as well because it's not over complicated and i like it like it's not 
they're not trying to be anything that they're not. It's very much like we're laying it all out. Yeah. There's nothing and to we're, hide we're here. Still like, it makes it feel like... I feel like the instrumental bits that are at the end of the, most of the songs that are quite mm. kind of long bits, especially on this one, actually, and it kind of shows that they're just enjoying themselves, doing what they're doing, because like, it sounded, literally I've written here, it sounded like I was at a carnival or something, mm. because it was like, there was like that whoop whoop like sound, and there was like whoop. whistles, whoop. and <laughs> like loads of bongos going on, and mm. yeah, and I said, it again, like... the percussion is killer. I never use that word. Are ever. Hilarious. <laughs> it's just killer. Alex was reading them out as um, just like little sound bites as we were listening to it, and I was just like, "Who is this boy that writes your I notes? <laughs> Who is he?" This is how bum reviews. This Al's is bum on. reviews. <laughs> um, <laughs> madness. Don't know what it is, Absolute but. madness. But um, yeah, I, I really like that one. To be honest, mm, that was nice. a close, close contender for my favourite one. Um, what did you make of sunflower seeds? Um, the only note I have for this, actually, no, that's a lie. There are other notes, but the main note is someone's got a pedal for Christmas and they're making the fucking most of it. <laughs> yeah, the, the wow, 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 wow. It does sound a bit like um, uh, Wham Last Christmas. Yeah. Like, in a way, I know you just said Christmas and that suddenly just came to me and I was like, hang on. Maybe <laughs> I'm thinking of, um, you know, uh, referencing Peace again here, but I was a big Peace fanboy back in the day. You a big Peace fanboy. Um, they did a cover of Last Christmas. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I could see that actually. And they made that sound like that wow, 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 wow. I don't know what that would be called. Probably just a wah kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, he kind of really mass- massively uses it in this. But Oh, I, I really liked it. I think initially I was just a bit like, oh, fuck's sake. I actually really like it because I, I, I was listening to a BBC Six music, music thing mm. with um, Davey from Boy Azuga. Oh, we love um, Davey. I thought I'd just have a listen to it and see what he puts on. And he put loads of like good, pretty good songs on, and then he put th- that song on, like mm. Sunflower Seeds. And I was like, oh, hang on, I've heard this before. And then, it, then that like that that guitar lick came in, and it was like the wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I really like that bit. Like, mm. it's really memorable because it sounds so different to every other guitar sound that's it's, yeah that everyone else is moment. using. <laughs> I think like I think. What I quite liked about this track, because after you had two tracks that sound quite similar mm. in their like percussion, tambourines, cowbells, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one sort of like started like initially slower. So if you yeah, were listening. Yeah, it was more ballady to me. Yeah. Because really it was like slightly different. It had like a different slower start. It kind of made you kind of resonate with it a little bit more. It kind of yeah. made you sit with it. It kind of made you slow down and kind of take in what they were doing and saying yeah. and like you were st- on the previous the song, just having a good, it well, I suppose. yeah like having a good time and mm. resonate with it a bit more and then my note on this one was just like they just definitely have a point of view and you can hear it there like you can hear their signature now yeah third track it and like we were saying yeah before, like, it's already laid the foundation has been laid the house is already being built on top of it yeah this is like the first couple of layers of bricks of the house because the foundation's the first two songs that are already there Someone being a philosopher over there. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> but I really, really liked it. Yeah. Was it a, is it a single? I put a question mark. Um, I can't remember. I think it must be because it's been on the radio. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, usually they only use singles it's on like, the radio. But I might be lying. So. I, I think it'd make a good single. I'd I think like it, it would. But the next song. Dog Tooth Grow. Yeah, let your dog tooth grow. That was one of the singles that was released. Mm, I really liked this track. It was kind of like this liminal spaces, suitcase, whatever it is, and dog tooth were like my top three of this whole See, album. I didn't really enjoy this one as much. Oh, did you not? But I can, s- but I can also see why it was the single because the chorus is just ridiculously catchy. Mm. Like it's Whoa, oh, let your dog tooth grow. Let it grow. But then I also wrote, weirdly, it almost sounds too close to that Frozen song. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I... No, I think it's kind of fair. Let it grow. Let it go. I can't oh remember how the Frozen God. song goes. But <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't think this podcast was going to go this way. It has. <laughs> Guess that Disney track. <laughs> Guess that Disney track. And we're already here. Like. <laughs> no, but to be fair, like I, I do rate it as a song. I um, think, yeah, but you yeah, can. go on. No, uh, I would say, like, I think it would make. I think the reason why I like it is one because it's like super catchy, and I'm yeah. a sucker for a bit of pop. Um, Classic. but I think it would make a really good soundtrack song. Um, 
I don't know if you watch like My Mad Fat Diary. Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, I yeah. think it make quite a good one for that sort yeah. of like nostalgia film. Yeah, nineties like yeah. nostalgia. Kind submarine of kind of thing. Coming, yeah, coming Maybe. of age sort of teen film would be quite yeah. good for this band to hook into. Yeah, it's quite um, cool, actually. It's and another one I thought would be like End of the Fucking World. I think yeah, that'd be quite a good one. For I this. reckon they probably, if there was a season two, it'd, I guess there probably wouldn't be. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, if there was a season two, that would be quite cool. Yeah, I just think like it. I'd happily use this for a soundtrack for something. And yeah. I think that's why I am mm. initially drawn to it. Oh, let Ducks in the grill. Yeah, it's quite nice, actually. Yeah. I, I, I've got a... It's quite harmless, which I think is nice. Yeah. I think I, I just really enjoy the instrumentals. Like, they, like that's one reason why I really like King Gizzard is because they've got tons of, like, instrumentals that just go on out of nowhere. Mm. And I think the Oreos have got tons of, like, instrumentals that come on towards the end of songs and they just kind of give you like oh yeah we've done the song now and let's have and a now bit we're a let's play. enjoy it like mm. just enjoy the little part at the end that's either you fade it out or you just kind of just finish it like yeah I like that I think they do that quite well actually yeah it's definitely like well done yeah congratulations guys yeah Good we've stuff. done the hard bit now let's, <laughs> let's enjoy ourselves let's have a little party um liminal space. oh I've got an interesting thing I want to say about this okay one. you talk to me do you know what a liminal space is Honestly, no. Fill me in. Because I, I don't know why, but I, when I first listened to this album, I thought, what is a liminal space? Like, what does liminal mean? I've never, <laughs> never seen mean? that word before. Yeah. So I googled liminal spaces, and apparently Can it I means... Can I guess? Go on, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's it, a good, good it time to It sounds like I think it might be a museum. Well, you're bloody wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it's apparently, according to... Is it Wikipedia? No, it's not Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> liminalspace.org. <laughs> liminalspace.org. This probably isn't a very credible <laughs> source, I suppose. <laughs> crikey, this is really just... Crikey. Crikey. Um, it, apparently, it means the time between what was and what's next. So a museum. So then. it's like a, it's a place of transition, I which mean, is quite cool, actually, if you think about it, because it's right in the middle of the album. Okay, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I see you being a nerd So it's them. like it's like the middle of the album. There's like going to be a bit of a change before you go to the next bit of the album. <laughs> Alex has just done some incredible dance moves. Yeah. Um, and I'm totally not stir about them, but well, carry on, Alex. Um, <laughs> but I didn't actually have any other notes other than that. I Is said, that so for some reason, some... I said it's a cool ambient piece, but on a set like more listens it just isn't an ambient piece in any way <laughs> i think the last minute or so is like it's like weird kind of sounds but i think this is a bit more experimental whereas like the rest of the ones are quite yeah they're straight straight up songs tracks, yeah or and this one was like a song and then like a weird bit at the end like yeah i thought it's quite a cool breakup song if you wanted to add it to a breakup playlist if you're listening guys yeah because it does i did write <laughs> it does say on my notes that it's a dreamy love song yeah and it's not, a mellow I number. I didn't so. read into the lyrics, but I just assumed it would be quite a good break breakup song. Yeah. Well, I can get behind that. Yeah. Moving on to our favourite song. Oh, Fuck. Sound of Liminal Spaces. One minute 40 of pure I mean, joy. I, this this kind of discredits the fact that the, vo- like the sound of the voice is really nice because there's no voice in this song. I don't think it matters. I think it's so it, mm. it's such a departure from what everything else is going on yeah. in this album. See, this is where Liminal Spaces comes into play because it's a place of transition where, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just making things up. I've literally just zoned out as you said that. <laughs> should, I, should, should I tell you my notes? Do you want to tell what, I can tell you my notes if you like. Well, you can, well, off you go. You said, you said you wanted to hear something that I was writing because oh, yeah. I was like, oh, this is amazing. I said, we love smooth shit. We do. Anything that makes Josie go, ooh-wee, is saying something. <laughs> how did, how did <laughs> That's I do literally it? what, ooh-wee. <laughs> Except you did it with a lot more, like, excitement that I can't <laughs> replicate. It's, as soon as it came on, you were literally just like, ooh-wee. Oh, no. It still I, weren't I, that good. But. I forgot about this track until today <laughs> because I think I just sort of either wasn't really paying much attention or I didn't think it... I obviously didn't resonate in my head very long, which isn't mm. really saying much, but they ignore that. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, I am feeling this. I love a bit of funk and I love a bit of like... Just a little dance. Just a it's bit like of a groove. Proper, yeah, it's a bit of a groover. It's like 70s it cop that. show meets DIY hairy porno. And like, I right. love it. <laughs> like, 
I just oh, remember, oh. like, it's it just it's just a bit silly. Yeah. Like, it's a bit self-indulgent. It's just it's a bit like, having a laugh. It's still got the whole, like, percussion thing. Like, that, I feel like this is a resounding theme throughout the whole album. It's just, like, this percussion, like, xylophones, bells, mm. shit like that. It's just coming out, and it's just, like... Yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. just a bit luxurious in the space of quite like sparse summer tracks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do get that. Uh, mm. Well, I think but top that's your number favorite. one. Yeah, I love it. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's, I, I think I did write my favourite track, so I have to just, go by my notes. I just like, can't believe I wrote 70s cop show meets DIY Harry Porno. <laughs> is that going to be the bio of this thing or the, yeah. <laughs> the actual title? <laughs> You could probably tie it with that. We're not going to get a sponsor, are we? No, not anytime soon. (laughs) Not if this carries on. Not if this carries on. But did you only bring it for the bottle? I mean, did you only buy it for the bottle? Do you want to record that again? Wait, silence. (laughs) But did you only buy it for the bottle? Yeah, hashtag relate. That's... Yeah, the amount of times I've been to Spoons and (sighs) bought something and then just taken the whole pitcher jug back home once but yeah. i really like the um title track not it's not even the title track the what title of this track <laughs> because i i've got a little story um so i went to poland on a school trip oh yeah and i brought a memorial a memorial bottle of vodka that was wearing a fur coat oh yeah so and I do remember this. vodka wasn't even that nice it wasn't, but it's because nope. it was wearing a fur coat it's wearing a little green fur to. coat and fun fact a teacher bought it for me and i was underage that's a scandal. Very scandalous. She was nice to me. She gets up. Did she get sacked? She didn't, but I'm not going to mention her name because she's quite a cool lady. I bet we could probably work out who that is if we no, tried hard you enough. But... You really couldn't. Oh, that's very interesting. Mm. But oh. on a music note, I love the chorus and I like the layered vocals. Oh yeah, back to the actual music. <laughs> I said it's very catchy and I like it. I like the contis- con- 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 consistency. Again, the use of percussion is really cool. Mm. Um, there's like a bit where the drums just kind of stop and it's just the percussion. Mm. And it feels like everything's slowing down. Yeah. But the percussion, like it is actually slowing down. Like the tempo is slowing down. Yeah. But the, like the shake is still going and it kind of keeps like this intensity up. It's still going, it. but it's actually slowing down all along. It's pretty mm. crazy. Like Pretty crazy. It's good use of the old, uh, the old percussion, like. They get a gold star from percussionists. Yeah, I, I give him. I think when I saw him actually at, at truck, like I remember Harry, oh Henry, sorry, oh Christ, um, hey, fan. <laughs> yeah, um, he was just smashing a cowbell like it was like no tomorrow. It was pretty crazy. There was only three of them on stage, like the obviously the three of them. I think they perform with four now, mm. but um, he was literally like smashing the shit out of a cowbell. Like it was pretty. I think that showed that they were going to do tons of tons of percussion on yeah. their album, but God, yeah. But yeah, on to he- talk, speaking of Henry. Speaking of mate Henry, what's in his pocket? So this track's <laughs> called Henry's Pocket. The only thing I have on this because I was listening, but obviously the only thing I wrote was "We're all lost in your pocket." Yeah, see, and I think that's a lyric. I, I want quite a um, interesting thing to say about this song mm. that. Um, it's definitely one of those like album tracks that is mm. just used as like kind of a filler thing, but doesn't go to say it's a bad song because do you remember the song by Arctic Monkeys on their first album called Perhaps Vampires Were a Bit Strong But? Yes. <sighs> my point's lost. <laughs> no, my my point being that a lot of people probably won't remember that song, but when they hear it, they're like, oh, hang on. I think you're forgetting. Yeah, I really that. like this song. I know that you you're a big you were a big fan girl of them. So I was such a big fan girl that I was I was convinced I was going to marry Alex Turner at one point in my life. I've I've I mean, grown past that all? now. Yeah, I... <sighs> dark times. Yeah, but I mean, none of us want to marry him now that he's bald. No comment. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I that's why I put it down. as like I put it down as it's not too memorable. And it goes a bit unnoticed because it's an album track. Like Yeah, it's kind of just there. Yeah. I like it. But that doesn't put it down in any way. Mm. But yeah, I didn't really write much other than that. Like, it's, it's a nice song, but I... 
not as memorable but just, as yeah. the other ones, I suppose. Yeah, just, yeah. It's just a, yeah. Um, in contrast, 48%, um, I thought it was really memorable. I like the bongos, and it makes me want to dance. I like the uh, ba 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 bars. Ba 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 ba. The thing is, whenever I do ba 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 bars, it sounds like. A, a, <laughs> not even that song. <laughs> it probably should sound that song. But it sounds like this Velvet Underground song called Who Loves the Sun? Oh, where it's yeah. like ba 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 ba. Who loves the sun? Ba, yeah. ba, ba, ba. And it's, yeah. So whenever I, I go to the ad ba 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 to my songs, it always comes out sounding like Who Loves the Sun. And I'm just, just like, oh, the same ba, ba, ba. just can't get away from the ba ba, ba ba bars when I could just do ba bars or like ba ba ba. Or <laughs> I bar. love how much you're um, <laughs> singing on this podcast. I don't yeah, I'm singing you, a lot. I didn't think you would be this like singy, but you are. I don't, I don't sing in, at all anyway. You do. You love mm. a good sing song. Sing star, it's your thing. Don't you ever forget it. Tell you what, the amount of times I've been out and just mentioned sing star and been like, oh yeah, I've got every sing star under the sun. I don't really, but... It feels like it. I kind of wish I did have every sing star under the sun. Definitely got the Apple one. We definitely have the Apple one. Ah, ba, ba, ba. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Boracero tree. Anything you want to add to um, I, I I had a moan about this song, actually. Oh, we didn't like it. I like the song. I like how it starts on piano, but I wish the piano was there and more present for longer. Mm, um, I don't think I really remembered the piano, which is probably telling. Why. Yeah, because um, I like how it's different. It makes it feel like it's different to everything else. Mm. But it it kind of gets buried. Like it does carry on. Yeah. But because like guitar and like singing and drums and whatever comes in, and percussion, of course. Um, mm. It gets buried in like everything else, which makes it a bit like ah, uh, like I kind of wish that it was just piano for a little while. Mm. But that's that's obviously like personal preference. Like, yeah, you still get like you the like. classic, the classic Indian elements, like your guitar and like your classic mm. drums and bass classic. and singing and <laughs> <laughs> everything else. <laughs> yeah, snaps. So next track after that. Yeah. Um. It sounds a bit more different, actually. I think snaps. It might be a clever thing that they've done where loads of different parts are snapped together into one song. Mm. That's what I was thinking. Because it sounds a bit, thing happens, next thing happens, next part of the song happens. Yeah, they feel quite they separate. But mm. they flow together nicely, but there are like very definitive sounds between it. Yeah. And then I think in this one, this sort of make, made me a bit more excited about what they're going to do next. Because yeah. of like, the variation of what it, yeah, was it, in it that single that track. Got... They've yeah. got the um, the ability to do something that's a bit, a bit more. I suppose this sounded a bit more rocky to me. I don't know why, mm. but yeah, it still, but it still showed that they had that sound that was there. It's like yeah, they're building, mm. like they're building and building and building. It's kind of yeah. like for me, I was like, right, I, I'm, I get it now. Yeah, I think that's this is like what, you, what can you do next? Yeah, kind of I, I, I want to see what's next, mm. and then it leads into blue suitcase. Yeah. Brackets. Disco wrist. <laughs> Disco wrist. <laughs> Which is my favourite phrase. This is the song, I think I remember seeing they tweeted or like put this out <coughs> as a single. Mm. And um, and they said that this was a song they just came up with in the studio when they were rec- like recording the rest of the album. Mm. Which I found quite interesting. I so. really like it. I think it <coughs> marries together a lot of different themes that run through mm. because it, it has it has that like up tempo indie vibe and it's really like cool like it's just cool yeah but then it has this sort of like underlying almost like 70s it brings in that like liminal spaces yeah the parts sound, of, like yeah. and that sort of like richness and the synth on that and i just yeah. think it's got a really nice twang like really nice and they're like mm. the wires in it are like just really cool see I've got an interesting thing to say. I keep saying this. I have got an interesting fact for but, you. Um, I like how this this song's a bit of a jam, to be fair, and it uses bells like a lot. Mm. But it uses bells in such a particular way that it, it reminded me of a TV show called Futurama. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Remember yeah. the introduction to that? Bow. Bum, yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Is that, yeah. that Grease? I know what you're saying. You're singing Greece, but I know what you mean about Futurama. Yeah, no, that's that's a different song as well, isn't it? They all sound the same. Wild thing. No, that's that's We all. If you know Futurama, you know. If you know, you know. But 
God. Um, <laughs> basically, it reminded me of that. Mm. And it was like layered up with the guitar doing the wah, wah, wah thing. Mm. And it did sound cool until it decided oh. to skip. I don't know if this is, must be a little like personal thing they put in to keep everyone on their toes. I found it really uncomfortable because the it track just... is so fucking smooth. Yeah, and then it just then... goes, oh. It's like I'm listening to it on like a record, like on a vinyl or something. like, And it just decides like, oh, you scratched it once and you're going to live oh. by it forever. But instead, you scratched it on your own Spotify, I and know. Spotify's like, sorry, like they. Uh... It's kind of like <laughs> I don't know whether like you're trying to cram too much into like that really tight space, and that sort yeah. of resulted into a bit of a jumpy section. Yeah, but like I don't you... really know. I, th- I it's definitely a creative thing. They just decided, oh, fuck it. it. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know because how... sometimes Spotify can skip. You know that. But now you've but said it's something I that you just I definitely wrote it down, up. so... But now you've just said, like, it's something that came up in just the studio and it wasn't maybe meant for mm. real ear production. I just, I, I don't, don't know. know. I, find it a bit, I find it really alien to the rest. It is bizarre. I don't know why they did it. I don't know if they intended to do it. Mm. And I'm not sure whether it's just a Spotify skip. It makes me want to go and check it online. Mm. To see if that is the case. But that that happened prior as but well. But it did your, happen yeah. on my Spotify as well as yours. So it must have been a creative choice. Mm. Because some people do it on purpose. Like the, There's tons of like Beatles albums and Can albums and people like that who do things on purpose to make people Listen. jump out and be like, oh, make people feel uncomfortable but i don't think the orioles are the type to make people uncomfortable <laughs> so i mean it'd be unusual considering like the rest of the album has yeah. been pretty chill <laughs> um i really like the way that it fades out at the end as well it feels like really urethral when she's singing on like that echo and it, well, and... it kind of fades out at the end yeah it's like that the sort of the beat sort of fades out that sort of funk tone fades out and she's just sort of like singing the hook over the top and fading mm. it's almost like quite Florence and the Machine, you know, when yeah, she sort yeah. of like sings out to the echoey room. Yeah, and it's, it's a like, little bit like that, and I, I really cool. liked it. Yeah, I sort of made. I want more of this track. Yeah, you want that to be the what, the way they move forward with it, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I want. Hmm. Sol's everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> Sol's your artistic <laughs> ideas. This is what I want. <laughs> I really like it. If you if you had to sum up the album in one word. Or in the case that I wrote it here, one words. One words. What would you, oh. how would you sum it up? I've got a word. What's your word? Percussion. Because I just wouldn't stop going on about percussion. And also it was the only thing I ever heard on the whole album. So. I just think it's, I think it's quite grinny. Like it's quite, it's quite a smiley yeah. album. And I think like. Yeah. Probably get, probably get behind that. Yeah. Yeah, good vibes. Uh, yeah. That's two good, words. Good if you put, Vibing. if you stick them together, good vibes. If you say it really quickly and put a hashtag in front, we're good. <laughs> hashtag good vibes. <laughs> hashtag good vibes. <laughs> yeah, if you put a hashtag in front, they have to be one word. Yeah. Good vibes. Good vibes. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I think it was a really cool album. Yeah. I don't think I'd listen to it again back to back, but I think it's quite a good album if it's you're doing something. Of, yeah. So like if you're cooking or if you've got people over or yeah, it's you a need good one for jobs that. to do and you need like mm. a bit of a, an easy going, like straight yeah, off the back. Is, you can kind of hum along to if you want to. Yeah, exactly. Except for if it skips. <laughs> <laughs> that, really really, that, that really has twisted it. But um, So I'm going to introduce you to my rating system. I haven't oh, even okay. told you about it yet. So I've done so much prep for this podcast and Alex has just said I'm going to so, do Have you got one. anything else to say before we do the... <laughs> no. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Okay, so the rating system mm. goes like a, uh, a clock. Mm-hmm. So 12 o'clock is like a thumbs up, mm-hmm. right? It gives everyone at home, all the listeners at home, however million there may be, um, a visual representation of where we are. So to be fair, it's kind of just from 6 o'clock to 12. Yeah, I get you. But um, so I I don't know where you're thinking. I think probably like a half ten thumb. Half ten. So what about there? Yeah. Maybe a bit more. Maybe quarter to, quarter to eleven. I reckon. Quarter to eleven. Crikey. Yeah. Crikey. It's <laughs> quite a good one. It's quite a like... high rating, to be fair. I know we're starting first one. We've got to try and set our set yeah. our level. I mean, I don't. There's nothing about this album is offensive to me. Yeah. 
Like I, I'd happily listen to this. I'd add it to a couple of playlists. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just trying to, work I'm just out trying what time to analyze <laughs> my what, what time my thumbs at, and I think it is ten o'clock. Yeah. Mine's dead on ten o'clock. Maybe okay. five to ten. Five to ten. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's where we're nice. at. Um, if you like the Orioles, you will like, or if you like blank, 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 Ooh. you will like the Orioles. Who's on your list? Um, I said Sunflower Bean. Mm-hmm. Um, Peace, probably. Yeah. Nice. Both indie bands, and Peace being a British indie band, and Sunflower Bean being a New York City. City. New York City. I also said Superfood, but they're a bit like kind of washed up now. And their newest album was a bit trash, so we won't listen to that one, don't we? <laughs> I don't think they're <laughs> trash. I just I don't like think it's the same sound. They, they were a, a band of their time. Mm. They had their time, and yeah, it's, just, it's a shame. Who would you say? Um, I picked both female-fronted bands. Yeah? As it's a female-fronted band. Yeah, I should have gone with that, really. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I picked Angel Olsen. Yeah. Um, interesting that's sort of like lo-fi DIY stuff and then a little band called Diet Sig I don't know if you've heard them I've seen them before but <gasps> I haven't listened to them on record I really love them they're like a two piece from I think middle America I think yeah Um, and they're quite in sense like quite rousy but at the same time it has that sort of like softness in her voice it's yeah. really like sweet so I think it's it's quite like a nice marry up and I think the Orioles kind of mash up a bit of those two together. And I agree with yours, nice. yours as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, bottom line, would you see this band live? Well, yeah, I probably would, to be fair. I, I have seen them, but I would definitely see them again because I think they're quite... I think it's good because they're quite young, so it, they're quite energetic live. Mm. I'd so. happily see them again. I think they're... Well, see them yeah. once. We'll stop, yeah. <laughs> I'd just happily see them. I think they're really cool. But where would you see them? Um, they're actually. <laughs> I've done. A, I've done a bit of research. Oh, guys. she's done her research. I'm a nerd. Done her homework. <laughs> um, on the nineteenth or twenty ninth, even the twenty ninth of November, they're playing in London at the wonderful venue Heaven. Ah, um, good old Heaven. And they're currently on their UK tour. If you're out of town, so yeah, it's wonderful. Google, I suppose. So that concludes our first episode of Owl's Bum Reviews yeah, on the Tiki Grins podcast. Do I have to? Um, Sign it off with a fart. No. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely not. That would have been quite fun. <laughs> um, but we thank you for listening. And you can yeah. check out all of our socials down below in the link description. Yeah. Um, and if you've got a suggestion of an album that you want us to review, tweet at us or get in contact somehow. And we'd be happy to add it to our little list next week. Our extensive list. Or yeah. next podcast, depending on whenever we do it, Ooh. which is commitment phobe over here <laughs> yeah no, let's, let's do it um, now <laughs> not now uh, we want to do slaves acts of fear and love yeah so we will discuss our back histories of slaves and how oh, we know them and very don't know them deep history deep and rooted <laughs> history with this band we'll um, get that. so yeah do let us know if you want us to record anything else cool speak soon see you later see you later do we have to wait we don't have to wait <laughs>